My last video was an introduction to ESP microcontrollers. I look at the ESP32, the ESP8266, and its compact version, the WeMOS D1. However, I missed one that is even smaller than the WeMOS, while still offering most of the ESP32 features, the ESP32 C3. This board even includes an onboard OLED display. No harm done though, this little device deserves its own dedicated tutorial. If you want to find out more about it, stick around. I am currently working on two projects that do not require this microcontroller, but when I came across it online, I just knew I had to get it as quickly as possible. I ended up bundling it with few other items and placing the order. The package was on its way from Shenzhen. I hate waiting for a package to arrive, especially when they contain components I am eager to get my hands on. But finally it has arrived. It took less than two weeks, which is pretty good. Let's have a look inside. Here's an ESP32C3 board, but this isn't the one I want. This one doesn't have an OLED display. This part is something completely different. This must be it. Let's cut it open. It's nicely packed in a small plastic container. Inside we have some protective foam and a set of header pins to solder onto the microcontroller. And here's the feature item of this video. Very small, sleek looking. The OLED display is really tiny. It's unbelievable that you can fit an entire microcontroller with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi support and with so many resources at your disposal into something this small. Let's take a look at the pinout. I will be following the information provided by the distributor's website. There are two buttons on this board. One is the boot button and the other one is the reset button. You will also find two onboard LEDs. One is the power indicator and the other one is connected to GPIO 8. The board is powered and programmed through the USB-C port and it includes a built-in 0.4 inch I2C OLED display with a 72 by 40 pixel resolution. You can also power the microcontroller through the 5 volt and ground pins. There is also a 3.3 volt output pin, but note that you cannot power the board through this pin. It's for powering external components only. This board exposes 13 GPIO pins, several of which have special functions, just like on other microcontrollers. You have two serial interface pins, six analog to digital converter pins that can read analog signals, two pins reserved for I2C, and four more assigned to SPI. Unfortunately, unlike some of the ESP32 boards, this one does not support a touch interface. That's the official pinout as provided, but I have noticed a few inconsistencies. According to the documentation, the onboard OLED display is connected to GPIO 6 for SCL and GPIO 5 for SDA. So it doesn't make much sense to also use GPIO 8 and 9 for I2C when there is already an I2C device connected elsewhere. And remember, GPIO 8 is tied to the onboard LED, which would cause LED to flicker whenever there is I2C activity. It might even interfere with data transfer. Since GPIO 5 and 6 aren't the default I2C pins, we need to declare them manually in the code using wire begin command. If we use GPIO 5 and 6 for I2C, they will no longer be available for SPI. So SPI assignment shown in the pinout isn't entirely accurate either. The good news is that ESP32C3 gives us a lot of flexibility. For example, we can reassign the SPI pins as follows. Clock to GPIO 4, MOSI on GPIO 3, MISO on GPIO 1, and CHIP SELECT on GPIO 2, as long as we declare those assignments in the code. Let's see if the microcontroller works by running the most basic program, the blink sketch. This way we will kill two birds with one stone. We will determine which board definition we need to select in Arduino IDE, and we will also confirm that the onboard LED is indeed connected to GPIO 8. 
If you don't see the ESP32 board options in your Arduino IDE, please refer to my previous video where I explained how to install those board's definitions. Let's look for the ESP32C3 entry. Here it is. Before we upload the sketch, we need to modify the standard example. The onboard LED does not exist on this board, so instead we will set it to GPIO8. One thing I don't like about this microcontroller is how long it takes to compile sketches for it. The compile time is noticeably longer compared to other ESP boards such as ESP8266. Compilation is finished now. The sketch is uploading and the LED on GPIO8 is blinking. Next I created a simple sketch to display Hello World on this tiny OLED screen. I won't go through the code in detail here, since I've already covered how to use OLED display several times in previous videos. This sketch uses the Adafruit libraries, it initializes I2C on GPIO pins 5 and 6, and then displays Hello World at the top of the screen. Let's load it up. And this is not what I was expecting to see. After a bit of troubleshooting, I realized that this OLED display is different from the ones I used before. On the product page from AliExpress where I bought it, I found a warning that I completely missed. This screen is different from other 0.4, 2-inch screen. The starting point of the screen is 12,864. I tried adjusting the display offset within the Adafruit libraries, but I just couldn't get it to work properly. So I started searching online for example code that would work and I came across this web page. It includes a few examples specifically for ESP32C3 boards, including a simple Hello World sketch. I downloaded the archive, unpacked it and found that example. Let's paste it into the blank sketch and give it a try. Oh, this is quite a bit of code. All right, it compiles, uploading, and it works. Now to understand what's actually going on here, let's clean this up. First I will remove the long comments block at the top, then I will delete the code scaffolding related to SPI displays since we definitely are using I2C. Next I will remove the extra commented out constructor lines, there are a lot of them, and keep only the one we are using. And just like that the code looks much more manageable. The structure of this code is actually pretty similar to what we did with the Adafruit OLED libraries. First we declare a different library and then we include the wire library for I2C communication set to GPIO pins 5 and 6. Next we create display object. We don't need to specify the display dimensions. They are automatically set by the constructor we are using. In the setup we initialize both I2C interface and the OLED display. Just like with the Adafruit displays, you first write everything you want to show into a buffer and only when you're ready do you send that buffer to the display. So here we clear the buffer, choose the font we want and write hello world. Once the buffer has everything we want, we send it to the display and then we repeat this every second. Even if you use a proper library, you can still run into issues with this display. For example, if you want to display a bitmap like this, I would normally use a table representation of the bitmap data, but when I run it on this display, using the function provided by this library, I get this result. It is clearly my graphic and it is the correct position on the screen, but it is visibly corrupted. I asked ChatGPT for help because I wasn't sure what was causing the problem. It turns out that when sending bitmap data to this display, the bit order in each byte needs to be reversed. The display used by the Adafruit library reads the bitmap bits in one order, while this display expects them in the opposite order. If I reverse the bits in each byte in the bitmap table and run the program again, I get the graphic as intended but as you can see, there is so much more hassle to get the result compared to the regular OLED displays. Let's do one more code example, this time demonstrating the Wi-Fi capabilities of this tiny board. 
will fetch the current euro to US dollar exchange rate and display it on the screen. We'll use data provided by this API. It doesn't require an API key and it's free to use. When we call the API, it returns the data in JSON format. We don't use it in plain text. Instead, we deserialize this JSON into a data structure that matches this layout, which makes retrieving the values very easy. You'd like a deeper explanation of working with JSON and deserializing data, I have another video where I go into this topic in more detail. In the code we include several libraries, for Wi-Fi, for the display, for I2C communication and for handling JSON. We set the Wi-Fi credentials, assign the I2C pins, create the display object and set up a secure network client which allows the ESP32 to communicate over the internet. The heart of the program is the function that retrieves the exchange rate. It connects securely to the API, sends an HTTPS GET request, skips the response headers and reads the JSON data. When all the data is read, we stop the client. We then parse the JSON, extract the USD rate from the rates object and return it as a nicely formatted string. If parsing the JSON fails, we output the error message. We also have a small helper function that display messages on the OLED screen, for example status updates or errors. In setup, we initialize I2C on GPIO pins 5 and 6, start the display and connect to the Wi-Fi network. In loop, we call our function to get the exchange rate, format it, display it on a screen and repeat this every hour. Since the API provides one rate per day, we could just as easily update it once daily. Let's see the result. And that's it. A very simple IoT project that shows ESP32C3 Wi-Fi functionality. Nothing spectacular, but you learn quite a bit in the process. So there you have it. A tiny powerful microcontroller that is ideal for your project as long as they do not require a huge number of GPIO pins. The OLED display is ideal for troubleshooting so you don't have to keep the board connected to your PC or rely on serial monitor. If you ask me, that's much better idea than the flashy LED matrix that Arduino put on its Wi-Fi Revision 4 board. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Like, share and subscribe if you did. Head over to my channel's main page to check other ways you can support it. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao!